Hi, um, my name is Martin Sopitis. Um, I use Blender for less than 20 years, more than 10 years. Um, I'm a teacher. I teach Blender at art school and universities. I also created the Physical Starlight and Atmosphere add-on and I founded a company called Physical Add-ons together with my team. The team is here in, 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 in Blender conference. And uh, I'm going to show you a presentation that's not going to be a usual pleasant presentation. I, uh, uh, for, for a couple of years, uh, this way of presenting has proved me um, helpful to be, uh, overcome some of my anxieties and stresses, and also, I mean, uh, becoming a teacher has helped. So, um, it's running in Blender Game Engine. Uh, it's, uh, in this case, it's UpBG. It's a um, custom, custom build of Blender. And uh, I started using Blender because of uh, Blender Game Engine, so I thought it's a nice, uh, like, homage to Blender. Anyway, um, this speech will have uh, three parts. So one is more like an introduction part. Uh, second is the culmination, not the culmination, like a problem. And the third part is culmination. It will be a story, not a tutorial how to do physical, um, like advanced physics of atmosphere and celestial bodies. But I will show it to you as well. Anyway, um, when uh, my teammate Daniels uh, uh, assigned me this uh, presentation, I was like, okay, this is going to be an easy presentation. I mean, how hard it would be to um, tell about advanced physics of uh, atmospheres and celestial bodies. And then I started to write it down and thought, okay, without the context, it doesn't really make sense. So. Here's the context. <laughs> um, yeah, I will start uh, from the very beginning. This is me, my mom, my brothers. My brother's here as well. Uh, he's a co-founder of the company. Um, so I, call, I come from a rather large country, Latvia. And uh, so this is my primary school. And uh, so there is a, there, there's a reason why I'm telling you, so uh, it is important. Latvia is over here. And uh, there is also a small gallery of important uh, pictures of, uh, of the place where I come from. And it's also important. I mean, it's uh, part of the context of this presentation. You will see later. Um, so yeah, the... Uh, environment and the background, uh, it influences me and it inspires me. And also, um, because probably because uh, Latvia, it has like 1.8 million people, you quite easily can do something and be special in it. I mean, <laughs> I started using Blender like 20 years ago, something like that, and I was special. Uh, <laughs> everyone else in, in, in the industry was like, well, how are you using Blender? It's like, yeah, the weirdo. Um, also, the background, my dad was playing computer games. Uh, they inspired me quite uh, a lot, and I knew that uh, one day I will be a game developer. These are some of the uh, titles that uh, really, really inspired me to turn to the storytelling side of uh, interactive, interactive storytelling side of things, yeah. Uh, again, so... Um, one way uh, how I imagine the um, I could go to game development would be uh, starting drawing games, uh, making com concept arts for games. So um, that was probably not the reason why I entered art school. But uh, this is the art school where I teach now. Um, they also introduced me to, uh, oh, well, the school had Maya licenses. Um, I really, really liked the splash screens of these to my versions, and uh, I'll return back to school in one moment. At the same time, my dad bought me a, a Mac, and uh, I think his idea of, uh, of uh, 
uh, getting me a Mac computer was so I don't play computer games. But uh, Mac back then had actually some of the best computer games. They weren't maybe the big titles, but they were the smaller ones, and they inspired me to actually try it out myself. And uh, yeah, one of the uh, one of the first uh, softwares that I came along, also one of the first games I played and I liked it was uh, a goo ball. And it was made by a small company in, in, in Copenhagen, over the edge entertainment, and they had this engine called Unity. And I thought, okay, well, uh, it's only for Mac, it's probably not going to explode, I need to move to something else, and I find this thing. Wow, Blender, it has a game engine. Let's try this thing out. And it, you know, runs on, on, on Mac and Windows. So I ditched the Unity idea and uh, moved to Blender. <laughs> this is the thing that was, you know, you got introduced to by Blender, and it's like, you know what? No, I will. I will. I, I, I just deleted it, and, and I couldn't really get used to the UI. And it happened for for quite a, for quite some time. But uh, I really started uh, loving Blender when two four two four eight came, uh, because it had the GLSL materials there, and two D filters, and Dalai was the one who was responsible for these things. So I started bugging him about the features and feature requests, and uh, uh, I created this scene. It was uh, like a normal Latvian bathroom. <laughs> my, my, my grandma had a very, very scary bathroom. It inspired me, so that's why it's also important that the background inspires me. And somehow the video uh, of, of, uh, of it got quite popular, and uh, uh, it uh, got into official Blender uh, web page. It looked like that back then in 2008, something like that. And there it is, like game engine video made by Martin. It's like, oh my God, I'm part of the Blender now. And you know, it also gives a lot of uh, inspiration and hope that, okay, this is the thing that I want to do. And yeah, I, I framed the screenshot. It's amazing, I still have it. And then, the, yeah, the video, I mean, it got it's not a lot of views, but I mean, it was back then 600,000, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, so... Uh, uh, I mean, I was super inspired by, 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 by that, and I, I knew that I will stick to Blender, Blender Game Engine. I mean, it's an amazing tool. So I will return now back to school. Oh, and this painting here. Now I finally start to make sense about the atmosphere. Back in art school, uh, we went to National Museum of Arts quite uh, often. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, one of the paintings that uh, actually um, stayed in my mind every time was uh, this one. It's uh, called, uh, let's say, <laughs> I'm putting it down. It's called Valley of Gaulia. Gaulia is the local river uh, in Latvia. It's uh, uh, the, the artist is Juli Speders, uh, 1891, and I remember myself staring at it and like thinking, "Wow, so amazing rendering techniques!" I mean, like, look at that uh, atmosphere there. It's like, how is he doing that? And back then, I remember myself that well, I couldn't really like, um, uh, I couldn't, I didn't have the skills to. Um, to understand like the basics of, of, of atmosphere rendering, but I could like it really inspired me to learn these things. And also you see the subsurface scattering on trees and then the glitter on the leaves from the sunlight. And uh, yeah, this was probably the reason or the second reason why I started to take a deeper interest in in, uh, in atmospherics, effects, reflections and light. Uh, <clears throat> and that also, uh, went throughout my uh, art studies in, in, in school. Um, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> Three days after Blender conference and my voice is now at the level where I actually am happy about it. I mean, I would love it to have this deep voice for my entire life. <laughs> but again, it comes, come, it comes with, 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 with extra sounds. Anyway, um, indirect light reflections. I mean, in school I probably was weirdo because there was no um, subject I was painting, it was these, uh, I saw a pre reflection, I saw a nice light, I saw something and I just, uh, you know, repeated painting it and drawing. I liked skin rendering, I liked um, reflections and, 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 and 
clouds and, and, and atmospherics, and it was something that went throughout my uh, whole um, arts, art studies. I didn't really realize it back then. Now I just look at it back and I was like, okay, yeah, it starts to make sense why I like that. This also, this is a presentation built on, on other presentations. There's, so, so, there's quite a lot of unused stuff here. So then, no. <clears throat> Oh, um, yes, at the same time, uh, during the art studies, I still had this dream of becoming a game developer, and uh, so I had my drawing skills, painting skills, I started to, um, ah, yeah, I bought, uh, this is my first actual purchase of my own money, I bought a uh, vacuum into a tree, I guess, and started to paint uh, weapons, uh, monsters, environments, and live through this uh, phase of uh, concept artist for local game studios, like, like really local game studios. It was not, nothing important, but it was important in the sense that it, I, I, I learned the 2D drawing skills, uh, 3D modeling skills, uh, UV mapping, uh, unwrapping, uh, animation, um, texturing. This is also a slide that doesn't really represent, uh, it's part of the older slide, so I'll just uh, skim through it. But it, it's, it's important uh, to know that uh, these experiences um, help me to understand how computer graphics works, how game, uh, thing, uh, game assets have to be optimized and why they have to be optimized. Why you should use one material or, 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 or as less materials on single mesh as possible. So you just, I started to automatically um, optimize things whenever I, it's, it wasn't even needed. So, um, you know, after after art school, I I liked uh, I liked art school. I mean, I was good at technical replicating skills, uh, and uh, I I quit the art school with confidence and entered the uh, Academy of Arts with a even bigger confidence. I thought it's going to be easy. And boy, I was wrong. I mean, I went into communi uh, visual communication uh, department, and there they taught uh, us that the uh, concept behind the art is important, not your technical replication skills. And e even like a ready-made chair or a urinal that's been put upside down is art, if you can um, explain why it's important. And, and, and it's more about the emotion, not really the technical skills, how you, how you draw. So this was a very um, hard time for me because I, wasn't, I was kind of like out of my uh, comfort zone. And uh, during the first two or three years, I was really sloppy at attending these lectures. But in the end, I got myself, uh, uh, I got an, a little bit more, um, mm, comfortable about the idea that uh, actually my um, technical skills can be also a concept, like an art form. And uh, yeah, it, it is a valid reason to, if you know how to draw, it's, it, it can be created, uh, it can be uh, described as an art form. And one of my ways how I, I dealt with the times in the art academy was these uh, during the end of the semester, there was these praxis and uh, workshops outside of the countryside. And we went the whole class and I took my laptop and my intuos and everyone else was uh, painting with oil, oil and, and acrylic and I was doing these live digital speed paintings. And uh, yeah, that was my thing. And uh, uh, back then I was like, okay, this is actually you know, working out quite well. I will probably become illustrator or artist and, and, and I like, uh, what I do, it kind of like uh, itches my, <laughs> like, like scratches my itch of becoming, a, I don't know, it was something that like, I have this feeling that I need to uh, train my lighting and, and, and shading skills. And um, yeah, I, 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 I um, graduated the art academy with, with actually quite a big confidence and I was like, okay, I mean, this is it. I mean, I guess it's the end. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going through the doors of success. I was like, okay, I will become an artist. And there's like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. So there comes the second part. Um, I found myself in open waters, let's say. It's a pun here as well. And, uh, and also a part of, uh, or 
new product, so my or or or, or um, marketing team is happy. <laughs> so um, you know, I find myself uh, floating in 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 the uh, sea of 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 uh, computer graphics. Everyone needs artists, everyone needs painters, so I need to start to earn my money. So uh, I will do a little uh, timeline break here. So. Uh, <laughs> for, for Daniels. This is our new product. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is, it, I'm developing all of my products uh, as shaders, and shaders are written in GLSL language. GLSL language, mostly, or, or the best way how I can make them are in, either in, 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 in shader toy or game engines. I use Godot and AppBG, that's how I develop them. And. Uh, and then I translate them to Blender as nodes, 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 uh, nodes, tangles, let's say. So I'll move to the next slide. So sorry for the timeline break. Um, so it's the time, yeah, where, where the illustration kind of starts to scratch uh, the right spots of the itch, but still, I mean, it's not the same. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm missing something. I was doing a lot of uh, illustration for magazines, uh, and this was how I earned my money. Uh, I mean, probably they couldn't afford photographers, so I was drawing the portraits, so it was probably also cheaper. Uh, but uh, the illustration was fine to the point where you're kind of like, I felt like I've stopped and, and not. Uh, um, continuing my studies of lighting and light transfer through skin and light transfer through atmosphere. So, uh, so I'm at the point in the uh, presentation while I, I'm, 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 I'm like, think, like improvising. So let's say I turn to dark magic, shaders. And shaders was my next uh, iterative step into learning about or, or continuing my, my art studies about the light transfer and, 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 and everything. So um, I mentioned uh, Dalai Felinto and there was also uh, Mike Pan who had this uh, shader in Blender game engine uh, and it was called Ambient Occlusion and uh, depth, of, depth of Field and I was like, wow, amazing, like 2D filters are incredible. I took them, took them apart, started to tinker with them added some new sampling methods and I was really hooked on them. Uh, these were like the first steps into, into my shader, shader world. And uh, also it was the time when, uh, when, when, when I started to become very active in Blender community and Blender, Blender artists and I shared all of my research work and my findings in, in Blender uh, Blender Artists uh, game engine resources thread, and it became my, my, my second uh, second home, let's say. Every day I was like there and looking what's happening. Uh, and during the time I real realized that um, I really love working with uh, atmospherics, uh, water reflections. It was something that, uh, that still um, Approved, not really approved. Like uh, it gave like a stamp. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still continuing my art. I'm not stopping my art studies. I mean, uh, I was, I was uh, learning how to draw and paint for many years, and then suddenly I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to become a programmer. No, no, that's not how it happened. And, 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 uh, and during the times when I was doing the shaders, uh, I was also not really programming. I was looking at other people's work, seeing what fits, and just combining different ideas together into one thing. This was a demo I did, uh, uh, now this one, in the last Blender talk here. I mean, that was like five, six years ago. And uh, I'm, still, I'm still doing water renderings. And uh, yeah, and uh, these are some of the screenshots that uh, that I made back then. Um, yeah, skin shading as well. And uh, these were the main topics, water, sky, skin, and also special materials. So here comes the third part. Um, during these, uh, yeah, probably the biggest reason why I got my first actual job 
was because I shared everything in Blender Artists and and and, and uh, YouTube and uh, a doctor approached me and asked if I uh, want to create uh, skin shaders and um, shaders for 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 anatomy and uh, and uh, shaders for 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 instruments and I was like okay yeah sure okay. and the first assignment was uh, I'll try to find it this is probably over here um, yeah this one this is the first shader I did for him. And uh, um, it's uh, you know the camera that goes inside, and I didn't know <laughs> what exactly that is. But uh, he was super impressed that uh, I could simulate uh, the uh, yeah the skin that well. And it's not a part of this uh, talk. I've just also skimmed through. I uh, started to work in uh, medical simulation, virtual reality company creating uh, medical training simulators for doctors. And this was uh, my job for over 10 years. And we did everything with Blender. Blender game engine also was some of the driving engine in some of these uh, simulators. And uh, yeah, it, it actually worked quite great. Uh, Blender game engine is really great for not actual like real games, but more like these concepts and fast prototypes, and then also for these uh, very specific uh, specific use cases like uh, medical simulators. Nobody really knew that back then that uh, Blender is actually running in, 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 in and teaching doctors how to uh, operate. And uh, this is my room of fails. I um, I, encourage, I I really encourage everyone to. Um, to do as many projects as possible, even if you don't see the end of them. Uh, this was the time when I uh, learned the most. The time when, when you fail the hardest, you learn the most things. And none of these projects saw the end of it. And, and, and for quite a long time, it made me sad that uh, they haven't really seen a public release. I mean, I spent like all of my life back then. I mean, I wasn't too social uh, about, about about going out with people, so I did these things. But then again, uh, the <laughs> these uh, failed projects, uh, how I call them, are the ones that uh, that are probably the most important to me. And uh, now I'm at the room that I actually haven't seen myself. I uh, this was the presentation part that I just uh, did on on Miro's computer and I replaced the textures. It actually looks quite good. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not a mess here. So uh, another story, I mean, this is the last story before I turn to actual physics of atmospheres and, 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 and celestial bodies. Um, um, yeah, so my first, uh, first uh, baby was born and uh, I realized that I need to take uh, something like uh, half a year off my, my work. I mean, the work at the simulator company was so involving and it was sort of startup-y that it took all of my time off. I thought, oh, no, 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 this is like sucking everything out of me. I quit all of my jobs and, uh, except for the school, uh, all of my other <laughs> works and, uh, and uh, I created, a, created an add-on. I mean, I, I will see if, I, if it's here in screenshot, it should be here. Wait, no, okay. Uh, okay, one of the screenshots is missing. Anyway, um, I polished one of my tools that I use the most, uh, and uh, to a point where I, where, where I realized, okay, this can be useful for other people. And also, Blender Market uh, uh, opened, and uh, so for, uh, yeah, so I sort of like finished it. I thought, like, okay, it's going to be fine. I need some some passive income for, for, the, for, for the next uh, half year. And it turned out to be great. I mean, in, 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 uh, it opened, uh, I, I, uh, um, I launched it on Gumroad at first. The Blender Market took its time to, to validate it. Uh, and uh, after a while, yeah, I, uh, I realized after a month or two that, okay, this can be actually a, a viable way how I can live. I don't have to work for uh, 
anyone any, anymore. And uh, now three years have passed uh, and I have uh, my team of people. I can actually hire a team and, 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 and optimize things how I do, how I do uh, work. So I don't, uh, uh, don't over, overwork myself. I mean, it's not like that. Uh, having your own company is like having another baby. But, uh, and if you have already two babies at home, it's even, even, even more difficult. Anyway, um, yeah, during that time, I, I, I realized that I can finally earn by, uh, by making exactly what I want. So I started to go and dig deeper into fi actual physics of, 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 of light transfer. So previously, I was using other people's work to like uh, squish them together, add my own like artistic view to it. And uh, now, after, after work in, 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 in medical industry, I had this access to academic uh, papers and started to do research. And more I actually read about these research and how to, opt, um, how to approximate things, I, more I realized how physics and science actually works. It kind of like still approximates things close enough that you can validate them in different ways. And it, was, it is very similar to painting. And art, you just so in school you 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 do a painting of a subject for over and over and over till you know you get better. It looks nicer and and nicer. And in physics, it's the same. I mean, you make one assumption, then comes another scientist. It makes a better, a better, um, a better <laughs> um, uh, function and uh, it replaces the previous one. So at that moment I realized, that, yeah, I can actually come up, come up with stuff myself and it's valid. It's not like it's, 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 um, it's, it's uh, not that it is wrong. I mean, CG in general, in many ways, is doing things wrong. It's like faking things and, and, and approximating things and like uh, um, uh, invisible, Invisible shadow catchers and stuff and everything, and 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 if it looks good and if it uh, um, if it touches your emotion and, it, and then it's right. I mean, it's like art. <laughs> um, at least I'm I'm telling it to myself, so I haven't really you know uh, <laughs> completely ditched on, on on artistic side of stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, I started to work on on, on physically accurate shaders. Uh, and uh, that looked right, at, at least to me. And uh, I base a lot of stuff on, on research. And 50% is also an artistic uh, look and artistic freedom. And uh, while I'm satisfied with it, it's, it's working quite nice. That's also the idea behind physical starlight and atmosphere. You cannot really find the exact solution in other scientific methods of rendering sky, so there's a lot of artistic freedom in it, and uh, I'm, I'm quite sure that it's why it is working that well. Um, and now <laughs> I finally come to, uh, come to the topic of the talk. <laughs> <laughs> Advanced uh, physics of atmosphere and celestial bodies. <laughs> People are leaving. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, this is also part where I have to completely improvise, and I will show it uh, also live how it works. But, um, okay, so. Uh, I'll just show some of the development screenshots. These are uh, taken while I was uh, I was uh, researching the shaders and, and and different kinds of atmospheric rendering techniques, and um, experimenting with with light transfer. So up he down here, these are um, photos like this one, that one, this one here, this one also here, and they show. Um, effects that are so subtle that uh, most of the um, computer uh, most of the techniques in computer graphic just skip them over because they're 
they're maybe not that relevant. Now it's a time actually in computer uh, game industry where um, these subtle effects start to appear. And they are, for me, making the whole difference. I mean, like this uh, um, backscattering, like halo effect around the viewer. Same happens here with the, um, they, they're called sun dogs, but uh, the mere scattering of the backscattering from, from the sun. Also, this uh, light uh, speck on the rings, they might seem like an artifact or photo, but it's actually the place where if you project uh, the um, array from, from, from the sunlight through the viewer, it's actually like projecting on top of the rings. And they, they, these are the effects that, uh, for me, make, uh, they go the way to the point where I say, okay, this is actually something that uh, you would see actually on, on Saturn's rings. I mean, if it's not there, okay, that's a CG to me. I mean, it doesn't really interest that much to me. And these small, subtle effects, they make, uh, they make, they do this extra, extra thing to me that uh, I would actually be ready to, you know, uh, uh, explore the atmospheres in Blender and then and, and consider it, it, it uh, uh, actual travel to space. <laughs> and. <laughs> And so, some of these effects also do um, do um, 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 they uh, they are so convincing or they they're so so surprising that they surprise me in a way that I'm like wow okay so for, for example there's shadows on 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 a planet uh, from the rings it it makes these nice. Uh, uh, nice light transfers that uh, that are actually surprising me in ways that I couldn't imagine that my work could inspire myself. I mean, like, I sometimes paint something as like, yeah, it looks nice, but I mean, it's not like surprising me, but whoa, what did I do? What's happening here? Um, so, yeah, I'm over to the part where, 20 minutes, okay, it's fine. To part where I can, uh, oh yeah, this is the part, part, uh, end of my, my last slide. Thank you for my for, for attending the presentation slides to me. So let's see. <laughs> Miro, no, you have a red on. I will delete it afterwards. Oh no. Oh, I've opened it. It's, I know where it is. <laughs> I moved it to um, here. Not too much space here. Oh, here's a demo of. Uh, advanced uh, um, atmosphere and uh, celestial body physics. And uh, so, uh, where do I start? So everything is uh, done in world uh, node shader editor. The reason behind that is that if you work with uh, real scales of uh, like real um, uh, scales of, of, of the planets, you st if, if they are meshes, they start to lose uh, precision. You start to get into the place where, where, where you have to start to tinker with, uh, with uh, near and far camera ranges to get uh, some any result or some result at all. So that's why um, we are doing everything in, in, in shaders. So all of the uh, math here is done in, in, in the magical shader world. So uh, yeah, we are able to um, simulate uh, planetary bodies. We can actually move away from them because it's real scale. It kind of maybe looks like HDRI if you move around the camera and it's static to probably most of you. But whenever you start to go into light speed, more, 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 you know, you can finally move away from the HDRI. And for example, go here. That's a few hundred thousand, or no, a few thousand kilometers away from the origin point of Blender. And this way, um, 
we have uh, an option to add extra planets. Uh, I'm not going to try it right now here. It might, 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 be, uh, might be risky. But uh, if you add extra planets, uh, you could add moon at the uh, real distance. And for example, without any tricks or, 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 or like magic, you can actually go to the moon as well. And if you go far enough, you can make uh, Earth look like a star or a small speck, and, and, and it still calculates everything there. You don't uh, have like this precision loss. Then, one added feature of doing everything in World Shader that you have uh, reflections for free. They're calculated uh, in real time. Everything also here happens uh, in Eevee. And if, uh, if it works in Eevee, uh, then it also naturally works in cycles. That's our ideology, EV first. Uh, cycles will work anyway. Cycle, cycles is easier. And uh, now for the crown jewel of uh, our presentation, planet with rings. So we, we call it Saturn, but it also can be Earth with rings or Moon with rings or you know, sun and rings as well. The idea um, in the end is uh, that uh, this way we can uh, simulate uh, not only planets uh, or, or, or um, oh yeah, light speed. Wait, I'll probably have to, well, I can do it this way. Oh yeah, also this planet is uh, much smaller, so this is like only five kilometers in radius. You can, you know, don't only 10 meters. Now the, um, oh yeah, it's been offset here. Let's set it in the center of the scene. Now we have super big atmosphere. So yeah, also you have free freedom to increase or decrease the radius uh, size of the atmosphere. You can make a nice uh, Nice um, screen savers for your computer or, or, or <laughs> background pictures. <clears throat> also, well, I have my phone lock screen that I haven't really changed for many years. I don't know, many years, so for a year or something, it's also from here. So it's, it's a business idea what uh, our planets can do. Daniels is pleased. And, um, yeah, the rings can be uh, rotated, uh, changed, and uh, also, yeah, this is my fi favorite part. That, uh, the shadows are being cast on the atmosphere as well, and uh, you have these nice effects that I couldn't really see it in any, well, at least not in, in, in the real world. Well then, this is the final slide of my presentation. Now, so for, for, for maybe some, some after, afterthought of, of the whole thing is, uh, well, the takeaway, let's say, is, um, yeah, I couldn't really uh, give the presentation um, about the advanced physics of, 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 like, without you knowing that I come from academic arts background and my approach to coding and, and, and programming is not about physic, like basing, basing everything on, on physical papers. It's more like uh, being an artist and but if it looks right, it must be right, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if it convinces most of the people, I mean, the real world does that as well. I mean, sometimes we are tricked by, by some actual phenomena and we're scared about scared of it but we well the actual physics to you know explain things and uh yeah my approach to coding these things uh, sometimes they are on 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 on, on I, I i'm i'm quite certain that i'm doing things really really wrong but in the end if 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 after the output gives you something that's that's like a pleasing, pleasing render, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a right way to, how to do things.
we have some time for questions. I, I, I forgot to mention that at any time you can also stop me, but so it's, it's too late. If you if you had something that uh, there was like it it wasn't really clear. I mean, I'm I'm uh, like running through the whole presentation, so that's why I yeah sorry for that. Yes. Right now, right now, no, they are uh, projecting on, on, on a really thin slice of plane. But, uh, so it's in, uh, it's in, in like a thought development that I could actually simulate how these uh, particles are, are formed. Because it's not that simple. They are not just like specks of dust that, uh, that float around. They are actually interacting with each other and make these very nice shapes. So the inner ring is moving faster, the outer ring is moving slower, and it makes these very nice curved, uh, curved uh, spirals that you don't usually see in, in computer graphics, but I want to, it's my, it's my mission to simulate it. And uh, so I will do it <laughs> because I'm really like a space nerd and, and, and I'm not doing this just to sell it. I'm just doing it for myself. So I, it makes me happy. Um, with all the settings as well, I forgot to mention that we have indirect lighting as well from the rings. And if you move the sun around, uh, the rings will, uh, um, the light will interact with the rings and they will be reflected back on the planet. It's less uh, less performant than, than just uh, without the rings, but also that's a problem with Blender. They don't have yet the um, uniform values. They just, uh, the sh whenever I change the sun position or something like that, it recompiles part of the code, and it's super slow. Other than that, it runs super fast. Like 20, if, it, if the display has like 60 frames per second, it would run 60 FPS. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh yeah, um, it's not really fake actually anymore. It was fake, uh, fake-ish for physical starlight and atmosphere. That was uh, like a parametric, uh, super fast one sample thing. Here, uh, they are actual volumes, and uh, we have three layers of atmosphere here. If you can see, for example, at this this at this shot here, uh, the upper layer has ozone. It has like a physical ozone layer that. Uh, does the absorption stuff, so it has like this bluish uh, um, haze here. Then there's the lower um, lower aerosol layers that gives a thicker, whiter atmosphere, and then there are Raleigh scattering, scattering that is this blue thing. In the future, we might add uh, extra layers because also we need a layer for um, emission layers for 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 the thin thin. Uh, glow, air glow layer and uh, the um, aurora borealis, so you can also simulate that. And clouds as well. Right now we don't have clouds. So it's yeah, it's um, it's it is uh, more physically accurate than most uh, most uh, uh, sky shaders. And also, yeah, wait, yeah, I will show you one thing. Um, if we move back to Earth. And you put uh, the Earth at the origin point, uh, so the surface is, uh, so here's the Earth radius, and uh, I offset uh, the planet back to zero, 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 and minus radius, and I forgot to copy, minus radius and extra meters. Then you have a skylight system. <laughs> it's a physical starlight and atmosphere two-ish, but it's not really doing it uh, very accurately. But it works. Let's see in the world. Uh, yeah, also um, textures and everything they work the same way. And uh, of course you can just oh yeah, light speed. Uh, well, yeah, you can also fly away now in, in this version of the sky system. How close do you think you are from Blender saying, like, nope, no more nodes? It's not going that direction. Nodes, everything. No, but I mean, how complex thing you make is 
Oh, you mean, oh, yeah, okay, I got your question. Uh, there is a point where, where you can make it even more complex. That's, that's where we have, we have uh, had this limit already for, for, for water rendering, and uh, the cycle says, no, the, something, something is full, the stack, something is full, you cannot do it anymore. And uh, there, there comes the, uh, um, my, 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 my uh, knowledge of uh, doing things in Blender game engine where I had to learn how to overcome or, or, or overcome situations and you have to start to learn to be out of the box and find new out of the box solutions and uh, um, this is part of for job. So optimizing stuff, it's um, part of our job. It makes our lives much harder. But I'm really hoping for actual shader nodes someday where you can just type in GLSL code in Node and it will compile it without having to do this thing, the, the Node tangling. <laughs> so it's like Node inside of Node inside of Node and then you just like start to realize that sometimes there's a loop, but okay, at least, at least, at least Blender recognizes it and just like doesn't allow that anymore. So yeah. Um, but I also believe that um, we are um, a bit in this spot where um, my patience on, 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 on doing this is, 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 is get, gets us a bit uh, further in, in, in the Blender uh, market because not a lot of people are ready to, to make things this way. This, this way. So, um, maybe that's helping us as well. I didn't under the, understand the question. Yes. You mean like the planets, planets yeah. and, and atmospheres? Yeah. So, uh, if I understood your question correctly, every every shape there is a parametric sphere. Spheres are really really easy to trace and also calculate uh, the lighting. Uh, they are real surfaces, but not like polygons. Uh, it, it is possible also to use uh, ray marching that we have already tried, but ray marching in, in nodes is uh, without uh, the loop node or, or repeat node that would be, that, that is really a pain, also super slow right now. Can you show us how to pilot on this? How to, how to, yeah. <laughs> Go to uh, blendermarket.com. <laughs> um, let's see what I'm looking for. Physical celestial object. There you have it. It's on sale right now, 50% <laughs> off. <clears throat> And if you're super friendly, we will give it to, to you for free. <laughs> like super friendly. <laughs> there. One minute left, nice. Miro, I will leave it here.